This right here is the Void Waker, one of the strongest PvP weapons in Old School RuneScape. The weapon can be created entirely inside of the Wilderness, and that is why I decided to make a new level 3, lock it into the Wilderness, and not look back until I've created one of my own completely from scratch. My account is a Bronze Man, which is a mix of an Iron Man and normal account. If I get an item once, I can buy it as much as I want from the Grand Exchange, so I will be able to access that area as well. I can both kill NPCs or PK players for upgrades, as long as I've looted an item and once it's open for purchase. I'm super excited to see where this journey will take me, so let's get started. There were two things I had to do before starting my journey into the wilderness. 15 agility to unlock the lowest possible agility training method in the wilderness and one slayer task to unlock wilderness slayer which is going to be an essential part of obtaining the Revenant weapons, as they're all five times more common to drop while on a Revenant Slayer task. Now, before we jump into the Wilderness, let's pick up the first ever Wilderness Slayer task of the entire account. This is a monumental moment. Yes, I understand I must kill it in the Wilderness. Can we get something low level to start off the grind? Rogues, I think that is decently fine. I think there are some lower level ones, but they are definitely deep into the Wilderness. But this is the first time I ever stepped into the wilderness on this account, and we are pretty much stuck in this area for now. So my first course of action is going to be to make some money. I'm going to be picking up these steel plate legs in the wilderness. It is a very risky area, and I have no food, and that is now the item unlocked. The steel plate legs have been unlocked for me to buy and sell on the Grand Exchange, make some money with it, and that's going to be my first source of income. Ooh, would you look at that? We also have an iron scimitar just chilling on the ground right here. Don't mind if I take that one for another unlocked weapon. And of course, we have the big bones as well. Let's just go ahead and unlock those right away. That is big bones unlocked as well. And we can, of course, now buy all of these things. I don't know if there's going to be any use for this crossbow, but I might as well unlock it. And regardless, I can sell it for 170 GP. So after selling these items that I collected, the bronze crossbow does not want to sell. I want to show you guys what the Grand Exchange looks for me as a bronze man. Let's type in Staff of Air, which is something I would love to have at this point. But we cannot buy this. We can only buy this if we have obtained it once through the wilderness. So the biggest problem for me currently is that I have absolutely no food. But shrimp you actually start with when you create your account. We're going to be buying 20 of these to go into the wilderness and make even more money with all this food. So because a lot of the gear and supplies I'm going to have to use in this series is going to come from PKing people, I think magic is the way to go, at least early game, and that's why I'm going to be going through the lava maze, avoiding these Black Knights level 33 to get myself a Staff of Earth, actually get a full inventory of them, and then sell them and get even more runes to level my magic. Look at that beautiful thing on the ground, 720 GP per staff, and it's also of course an unlock, so we now have an actual staff to use for PKing. Of course we do also have the steel plate body with a bit more value, but a bit riskier with the lesser demons being able to hit 8 damage, but if I'm quick, that's another unlock and that's 200 extra GP per pickup. Oh, well, that is, yeah, exactly, that is why that was definitely more risky to do. Well, even though we died, I have some good news. We could at least afford 750 casts of Airstrike and even Earth Strike when I get to that level, because we do have the Earth Staff now, so let's begin training some magic. Ooh, I can already get some revenge for that death. These are actually safe spotable through the fence, and they have negative magic defense. And they also have a pretty good drop table, so we could get some nice unlocks, make some money here, and also get some nice magic experience. That is a massive level. We just unlocked the Earth Strike spell, and this has a base max hit of a 6. Meanwhile, the Air Strike had a base max hit of 2. And oh my god, we're already getting the max hit. Look at that difference. I think that's it. That's the first Lesser Demon killed. 10 magic. What is the first drop going to be? There could be so many good things. 40 coins and a looting bag. Actually, I'll take the looting bag, but this is a bit risky. Also, vile ashes. I think I can sell those for something, so let's see what they're actually worth. Unlocked item, and they are worth 650 GP. That's, that's insane. That's so much money, and I have to run. Oh, there we go. I was waiting for that drop. That unlocks Fire Strike right there. 60 fire runes. I wasn't really sure how I was going to get them, but that is a nice way of getting them. That is an 8 max hit now. Honestly, I think Fire Strike might even be the first PKing ability I use, because it is a pretty budget spell, but it hits really decent. 
Oh, that is the max hit. Did you guys see that? Eight damage, seven damage. Just look at these hits, man. Oh my god. Oh, and there we have a weapon upgrade as well. Steel Scimitar, already upgrading from the Iron Scimitar I picked up earlier, but uh, I'll have to wait to kill this one first. I don't want to go in and get another Lava Maze incident, getting hit 8-8 eight, eight and just go to Lombridge. And we have another massive unlock coming in. I'm going to sneak in and try to pick this up. Death Rune is going to be super useful for higher level magic as well. Right now, I'm probably going to be selling it to just keep the money, but in the future, that's going to be good. That's the last one. That is the last type of runes that I actually needed to unlock from the lesser demons. The chaos runes has been obtained. Oh my god, that just paid for all the runes. Nearly a 5000 GP drop right there. I paid 6k for all the runes. I'll definitely take that. I don't even know how we could have gotten more value from 6000 GP than we just did. We made money. We're going to be selling all of these things in just a bit and see how much we actually made. And from that, we also got all the way to 27 magic and 18 hit points. So let's go ahead and collect all of this loot. 16k cash and we have now a total cash pile of how much? 18.2k. That is pretty decent. We're going to be reinvesting this right away into runes. What I'm about to do is definitely a gamble, but I want to try and do this because I feel like there are some benefits to this, so let's talk about them. I'm going to be killing fire giants in the deepest part of Wilderness, located right here on the minimap. I have two main goals with fire giants. The first one is to level magic, and secondly, I really want a fire battle staff. I believe the fire battle staff is probably the only way to get any type of fire staff in the Wilderness at all. It is a 1 in 128 drop rate, so kind of hard to get... But there is a chance, and on top of that I can get a lot of other good items. Nothing too interesting from the first trip, but 30k of loot for 15k worth of runes, so that is definitely good, we're basically doubling our money here. Okay, so I might as well talk about this, all the herbs that I get from this grind is completely useless because I did not do Druidic Ritual before entering the wilderness, I can't even make potions, and I didn't think I would need to, I probably don't have to because I can PK all the potions. Oh my god, we got a Drune Scimitar, 15k cash and a massive unlock. I actually think the Rune Scimitar when I get 40 attack is going to be the weapon I use all the way to 60 attack until I get Vigora's Chain Maze if I'm lucky enough too. Definitely a bit of a heftier trip right there, 38k cash from that one Rune Scimitar and a tooth half of a key bringing that up quite a lot. Oh, I didn't even think about that, they can drop Strength Potion to those. That's actually going to be so useful for when I want to train attack, strength, and all that good stuff. Because I, I think I only have a, a steel scimitar for that training. So having strength pots are going to be really helpful. I know I said all herbs were useless, but the money is pretty good. I mean, Raynar 5.5k, I'll definitely take that and at least sell it for something. So meanwhile, I was killing these fire giants. I saw low level accounts just in my level range running past here all the time for many hours upon hours. And I thought they, these guys have to be bots. They are bots doing some type of activity at the end of the tunnel and running through the entire time. And I was right. They are actually telegrabbing wines of Samrak. And I thought I might as well try and actually kill one of these, because if I can kill one of them, they might have stamina potions, which would be absolutely massive for my account, some food unlocks, or just the Wine of Samurai himself. They are worth quite a lot. Yeah, the problem is I don't have any entangles, any roots, anything like that, so they can just kind of run away from me, and they seem to be bringing a decent amount of food, so... I can't just, you know, get a couple of good hits in and I'm good basically, so I'll probably need some type of snare or entangle for that. After this fire giant right here, we are actually on the drop rate for the fire battle staff and we have not got it yet, but uh, the money is decent, we're definitely profiting from this and the rune scimitar was definitely a highlight. We are making one last rune investment. We have bought 6,000 earth bolt casts. And uh, if I do not get the fire battle staff on this, I am going to do something else. But uh, let's hope that I do. Oh, wait. Lobsters? Wait, they can drop lobsters. I didn't even think of that. That's a food upgrade right there. I now have 12 healing food instead of bread, which heals only 5. And by the way, they cost the same. Lobsters are like 170 GP and so is bread, so that's just a straight up upgrade. And there we go, that is 50 magic, a massive spell unlocked. I can't believe I've got 50 magic with basically just casting Earth Bolt for an entire day. 
This account is definitely a bit interesting, but that basically unlocks PKing, I think. We are back with snares and earth blasts with death runes to try to get one of these guys killed, and uh, hopefully I don't splash all the time. That's a massive hit to begin with. 14 damage? Oh my god, we got him. Wait, we actually hit him so hard in the end. Oh my god, look at that loot. 28 law runes? Yeah, that's telegrabbing for sure. One coin... 26k worth in Wines of Samurak. Maybe it's actually worth killing these guys. I'm not too sure, but uh, definitely nice to get my first kill of the account. 32,000 GP for the first kill. I'll definitely take that. It's really fun to PK when like 32k is a massive loot. Oh man, we are definitely at the end of my rune stack. 600 air runes left. And we get another rune scimitar. It's the same drop rate as the fire battle staff, so it's not looking great. Well, it's been around 10 hours of killing fire giants, and we've killed 271 of them. And uh, we have not got the fire battle staff. We are well over two times the drop rate, so I'm going to be calling it here, and we're going to do something else. So after selling all the fire giant loot, I decided to buy 263 big bones, because together with the ones I already had, we now should have enough exactly to get 43 prayer on the chaos altar, Hopefully we do not get PK'd, so let's get into it. To risk as little as possible, I'm not bringing any noted bones, just going to have a full inventory of big bones. I'm going to be running from Ferox Enclave all the way up to the Chaos Altar right here, and I'm going to be running all the way back. After that, I can restore my run energy at these pools right here, so I should be able to at least run most of the time. Okay, look at this now. It's always so satisfying in the beginning. You just get levels upon levels. Just look at the uh, top right corner on my like XP tracker. It's just level upon level. It's so awesome. Oh my god, I am so close. This is the last bone that I have and I'm 42, only 440 experience off. Can we keep getting... Okay, there we go. That's the last one. 387 experience off. But you know what? Maybe these accounts have some bones and uh, i want to get into some pking so you know what i'm going to get some snares i'm going to spend some money on it and we're going to try to get some bones from these people using them definitely a bit of a risky move risking 22.5k out of the like 50k cash that i have left over but uh, i think it might be worth it oh he's low level oh i can attack him he has like no hp he has 10 hp uh, this took a while actually to find someone we got a pk let's go dude oh my god oh my god oh my god what did uh, this guy did not expect to die there is no way whole how much is that 4.5 million and we also got stamina potions and he had he had 76 000 gp on him oh my god what just happened I'm sure this guy, looking at the stats, look at this, 94 prayer as the first thing. He probably brought so much risk, thinking no one could really attack him. I could not have hit a better target. This is a count-changing early game. Look at the amount of money I'm getting from this. 4.4 million GP. And I was just scraping enough money to get uh, the big bones that I needed to get 43 prayer, which we still haven't got yet, but uh, we definitely have the money for it now. Having these stamina potions makes everything so much nicer. Of course, I will probably level agility in the future anyways to get it just higher for shortcuts and all that good stuff. But yeah, stamina potions makes a massive difference. But here we go. This is finally the goal of 43 prayer and we're going to be unlocking all the protection prayers, which of course is going to be super useful for both PVMing and future PKing. So that is now nice to have unlocked. But that is where I'm going to be ending the first episode of the series. I have some massive goals in mind for episode number two. And with the newfound wealth, I think we have some awesome goals to get to. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like. Subscribe if you actually enjoyed this series and want to see more of it in the future. And let me know with some feedback in the comments as well. But I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.